So let's jump in now into what I'm going to cover. So the first thing I want to cover is AR and AP balances in cash basis balance sheet. So one of the articles that we wrote, um, not that, we, that I wrote, some that I rewrote, that I took from Intuit's original article in, in, their, in their knowledge base. So I basically just reworded a couple of things here and, and posted here. It actually walks you through the four areas where you can have issues on your balance sheet. So if you pull a cash basis balance sheet, in theory, you should see no accounts receivable and no accounts payable. In theory, right? Cash basis balance sheet should have no accounts receivable and no accounts payable. However, in QuickBooks, because of how the database works and how things are structured, there are certain transactions that they're all listed here on this article. So look into it one by one. So I'm going to show you examples of a couple of these that actually caused that issue to happen. So I'm going to jump into QuickBooks now, jump into my trusted QuickBooks test up here, and I'm going to show you a, a cash basis balance sheet. So I'm going to open QuickBooks, hold on a second. There we go. Okay, so I have a cash basis balance sheet up. And the most important premise here where I uh, need to frame around what's going on here is that generally there should be no accounts receivable and no accounts payable in a cash basis balance sheet. Let me make sure everybody agrees with me on that. However, there are certain transactions that will cause this problem to happen. Okay, one of them is to receive a payment for an invoice in the future. So I'll give you, an, I'll show you an example. So I'm going to go to customers here, and I'm going to go to transactions. I'm going to click on invoices, and I'm just going to take a look at the invoices that are dated this year. Because on the balance sheet we had opened, we were sort of focusing on last year. So I'm going to take a look at any invoices that are dated this year, and I'll take a look at, for example, this one. So this invoice is dated 2019. And when we did last year on the sample file, we're talking about 2018. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive a payment to this invoice. I'm going to receive a payment to this invoice using the previous year, 2018. So I'm going to go to customers, receive payments, and then I'll receive a payment, I don't know, 5,000. Make it very easy, very clear. I'm going to unapply it here for a second just to kind of show you. And I'm going to date this some point in 2018. Okay, so, so the payment itself lands into QuickBooks on that previous year, but the invoice related to it is for a future year. So what that's going to cost, hit yes here. So when I go back to my cash basis balance sheet, you're going to see now I'm going to have negative accounts receivable. So th that's the number one reason for negative accounts receivable on actually both a cash basis and an accrual basis balance sheet. So as you're troubleshooting this, uh, you may want to take a look at what specific invoices are causing this problem. Now, if I double click on this number, right, and then I want to make sure I'm looking at here multiple years here. So if I double click on that number, um, typically the report itself, let me just, uh, the report itself, in this particular case, it's easy because I'm going to make the font smaller because it's hard for me to work. I'm trying to make it easier for people on the webinar, but the font is difficult. So typically, when I look at a report like this, um, in, in the real world, you, you're not going to have just one item there showing up and telling you, okay, this is the one item that has the problem. So there's, there's multiple techniques that we can use to identify and pinpoint the issues here. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to change. Uh, I'm going to add something to this report that makes things a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to double click on this payment, and I'm actually going to apply it. So I'm going to take a payment for 5000 for the previous year belonging to a, an invoice of the following year, and I'm going to apply it. In theory, the way QuickBooks works is as long as I have an applied payment, a cash basis report will modify the financial statement, and it will create that income based on the payment date. But there's an exception to the rule here is if the payment is before the invoice date, then that, that new payment date is actually going to be applied as the actual invoice date. So, so in, in cash basis, if the payment is in the future, the income gets pushed to the future. But if the income is in the past, the income gets pushed to the 
actual original invoice date. So that's an, orig that's an important concept uh, to keep in mind. Now, so that's one of the things that causes negative accounts receivable in my balance sheet. Now let's talk about what will cost positive accounts receivable in a cash basis balance sheet. So I'm going to do an example here. I'm going to create an invoice. So I'm going to go to customers, create invoice. And I'm going to create an invoice in 2018. So I'm going to leave a 2018 date there. I'll choose a sample client here, Hector. It will be my sample client here, Hector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoice him a service item. Okay? So I'm going to grab any of my service items, like uh, custom work, labor, something like that. I'm going to take my service item, and then I'm going to make this $12,000. So if I invoice something in 2018, and it's not paid, and I'm pulling a cash basis balance sheet, the question is, are you expecting to see accounts receivable? Yes or no? And, and, and you, can, uh, you can answer these if you want to via the chat, if you want to give me some feedback. So are we, are we uh, expecting to see $12,000 in our cash basis balance sheet uh, in this particular case? So the answer is no. So I'm going to hit save and close. And I look at my balance sheet, the answer is no. However, this is the, the trick behind sort of this problem, is if that invoice, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to search the invoice here real quick. If that invoice contains, in this case, an inventory part, an inventory part. So the invoice contains an inventory part. So I'm going to change this from custom work to some sort of, some sort of inventory part in here. So I'll pick this one here. Let me just double check and pick an item that we have in stock, because that will take us into a whole other issue here. So let me just make sure I pick an item that we have in stock. So let me just uh, look for something I have in stock. So I'm going to go to reports, inventory. Where's my inventory? Uh, my inventory is not here for some reason. That's, that's strange. For some reason, uh, the report inventory report is not there. Okay, I'll just pick this one that has inventory part and hope that I have it in stock. So I'm going to sell this inventory part for $12,000. Just uh, put here 12000 So the difference that we did from the first uh, option is first we, um, we went to uh, a, a service item. The service item did not post my accounts receivable, but my inventory item did post my accounts receivable. So this really strange thing happened. My accounts receivable used to be negative 5,000. Now it's negative 4,968. Why is this happening? If I double click and inspect on this accounts receivable, make the font a little bit smaller here. If I double click and inspect it, I see my original 5,000 that is causing a problem, and now I see a real random number, 32. So $32 affected my accounts receivable. Does anybody want to guess through the chat or a question, why is this strange number, like $32, showing up in my accounts receivable in my cash basis balance sheet? Anybody want to guess? Exactly. So, so somebody said cost of goods sold. Somebody said cost of the item. So the issue is because there is a transfer of a transaction from, from balance sheet to balance sheet. Basically, I'm moving, in this particular case, I'm moving the value of the inventory from cost of goods sold uh, into sales. Or I'm moving it away from something, right? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm moving it from inventory to cost of goods sold. Sorry. I'm moving it from inventory to cost of goods sold because I'm affecting my balance sheet, then, then that accounts receivable needs to be affected. So whenever you have, whenever you have an accounts receivable, transaction in a cash basis balance sheet that is not paid but is affecting a balance sheet item, you will still, you're still going to see that affecting your accounts receivable. I'll give you another example here which is peculiar. So I'm going to grab here, I'm going to create an item that affects a, a balance sheet of some sort. So I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to affect, let's see if I have some sort of uh, current asset or current liability here, customer deposit. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab I'm going to put here deposit. So deposit, okay? So I'm going to grab an item called deposit that affects my balance sheet, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to put here negative 4,000. So for whatever, whatever reason the client had, we, had, we adjusted this invoice to some sort of balance sheet account, and I'll hit save and close. 
And notice what happens. Okay? And, and this is what Canada is saying about this. So what ends up happening is, is a proportion, right, a, a proportion of that, of that amount, and I'm just going to just, uh, I don't think you guys can see the entire report here, so let me just uh, simplify it. So, so now what ends up happening is a proportion of that invoice, proportion of that invoice, uh, which is the $32 and the $4,000 are now affecting my accounts receivable in here uh, because it's affecting the balance sheet. And then, uh, and then this other entry, which basically takes the proportion of the cost of the item, which is, this is really what, what makes things kind of tricky. So, so the proportion of the balance sheet, which in this case is 4,000 divided by 12,000, we're talking about two-thirds. So the system is netting two-thirds of the original cost of that product and it's posting it into the balance sheet. So it's kind of an interesting on how QuickBooks behaves. That's a very interesting uh, concept and it's important to understand it because when you're troubleshooting that, that, that number, you have to keep that into consideration. So what most people will do in this case is they'll come in here and they'll make a journal entry, uh, take away accounts receivable, right? So we'll debit accounts receivable and credit your sales which is not entirely wrong. I think at the end of the year, it will probably be okay, you know, for, for more, most IRS type scenarios. But the problem you're having is that you're not correctly identifying the root cause of the problem. So, so because of that, it, it's very tricky or it's very uh, difficult to actually deal with a cash-based balance sheet. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind about that. Okay, um, all right. So let me go to accounts payable now and talk about accounts payable. So still, this is a cash basis balance sheet and I have an accounts payable amount. So let's talk about the two circumstances. One is a negative accounts payable and two, a positive accounts payable. So something that would show a negative accounts payable in this case would be an unapplied bill payment. So I'm gonna go to vendors, vendor center and I'm gonna go to transactions here and I'm gonna go to bill. I'm just gonna look for a bill dated this year. So I'll just grab whatever bill that's still open. We, we don't have any open bills right here, this one, Peacock, okay? So I have a bill dated 2019, and I'm gonna pay this bill, but as of 2018. So I'm gonna go to, uh, in this case, vendors, pay bills, you know, date this 2018, perfect. And I look for the Peacock one, there you go. And this is 2018 still. I want to make sure that's clear, right? We're talking about a payment in 2018. So I'm making a payment in 2018. And in this case, it's applied. It's an applied payment. But when I go into my cash basis balance sheet, now I see that number, the 2000 something, cost that number to go to negative, okay? So uh, an applied or unapplied, actually both, an applied or unapplied payment dated one year where the bill itself is dated in a future year, it's going to cost you to have negative accounts payable. Now, if I double click on this 560, in this case, in this particular case, uh, in this report, things are being uh, just, it's just bringing it down to one transaction that is, that is causing the issue. But in real life, when you guys deal with this in real life, you're gonna have tons of transactions uh, causing a, a problem here. So that's an important piece to, to keep in mind there as well. Uh, the other thing that would cause that accounts payable to go over would be a, a bill that contains inventory. So if I go to vendor, enter bills, and I contain a bill dated 2018, so we're still talking about, again, we're talking about eight, 2018 dated bills, and I'll select, any, uh, I'll select any vendor here, and I select any account, like, for example, uh, gas, and I'll put here, $10,000. So in, in theory, if I save this bill, it will not affect my accounts payable, right? I think all of you guys will agree with that. So because this is a bill, it's open, it hasn't been paid, it will not affect my accounts payable. So I hit save and close. Not affecting my accounts payable, I just want to illustrate it by showing you on the balance sheet, okay? But if I take that same bill, and instead of doing some sort of uh, 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 expense account, Instead of doing that, I use an actual inventory part. I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. 
And instead of hitting the expense account, I'm going to hit an inventory part. And uh, let me just select any inventory part that's here. And this will be whatever, 10,000. And I'll hit save and close. We're going to go back into our balance sheet with an unpaid bill that had an inventory piece and that cost the, the issue. Okay? So that is, in a nutshell, what causes a problem with negative or positive accounts receivable or accounts payable in the balance sheet when the balance sheet is cash-based 